Hi, this is Inga Hansen, editor of Metastatics Magazine. Thank you all so much for joining us. We're going to go ahead and get started with today's webinar. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the box on the right-hand side of your screen, and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. Today we'll be discussing the tools and resources that are available to help you develop and plan a new medical spa business. Our presenter is Francis X. Acunzo, Chairman of the Aesthetic Business Institute Advisory Board, founder of Acara Partners, and CEO of MedSpa 810. Thank you so much for joining us, Francis. Thank you, Inga. And hello, everybody, and thank you for joining my webinar today. Uh, the turnkey solutions for the do-it-yourself DIY approach to developing a medical spa. Before we begin, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I was the original founder of the medical spa movement. Uh, it was all the way back in 1991, way before Botox, that we started putting cosmetic lasers into medical spas. And then in 96, we merged a medical a spa company with a cosmetic laser company to really move the industry forward. Um, the owner and operator of over 70 spas and medical spas, including the world's first med spa, uh, along with my team, uh, I have created a, a proven system to develop profitable med spas and aesthetic practices. Uh, throughout my career, I've secured over $100 million to finance spa projects, wellness projects, and medical spa projects. I've done over 20 successful acquisitions to grow and expand businesses. And during the recession, we doubled sales at 12 different cosmetic practices and med spas. Presently, I'm the CEO of a chain of med spas, uh, which is, as Inga had mentioned, Med Spa 810. And I am also the chairman of the Aesthetic Business Institute. Okay, in a DIY situation, there are three integral phases. We've got the project viability, which is really like the feasibility of the project. We have number two, which is securing the financing and identifying your location. What's interesting about that is, you know, you, you need to have your financing place to sign a lease, but you need to sign a lease to get your financing. So we're going to talk a little bit, little bit about how you go about doing that. And then finally, phase three is plan implementation. Phase one, project viability. So this is the feasibility of the project, developing your concept. Uh, AKA vision and mission. We like to keep uh, vision and mission, or especially mission, very simple. It's, it's the why of what you're doing. And that's really what it is. So it's a, uh, an aesthetic cosmetic practice. It is a medical spa, uh, or it's a cosmetic dermatology practice. How you're doing it? Well, we're going to be providing non invasive body contouring along with laser skin rejuvenation and clinical skin care, right? Who you're doing it for? We're going to cater to women over the ages of 45 to between 45 and 64. And where you're doing it? Well, we want to do our business within a 20 minute drive time of, let's say, San Diego, right? So that's really what your mission is all about. And then you have your program components, injectables, skin rejuvenation, non-invasive body contouring, et cetera. All right? So you have to identify all the, the, the what and, or the how, I should say. Uh, and always think about your company culture. Are you going to hang your hat on that clinical and very scientific uh, approach? Is it going to be fun and flirty? Uh, what, what's that culture going to be like? And what are you presenting? What values are important to you? Uh, you typically need to figure out what your unique selling position is. Oh, I know. I, I've been in the marketplace for 20 years. I'm highly published. No one has done cosmetic dermatology as long as I have. There's a unique selling position that no one can overcome, right? It's usually something that gives you the highest level of competitive advantage because it's difficult to achieve it. So it could be how long you've been doing business in a marketplace. It could be you're the first to market with either a technology or possibly actually as a med spa first to market because there isn't one in your, in your general vicinity yet. 
And then, of course, there's always those points of differentiation. What makes you unique? What makes you uh, a place that's memorable? It's very important as well. So you, you need to think through your concept and, and visualize it, envision your concept. before. At, at, that's at the first step. So before you really begin to get financing and work with architects and talk to landlords, envision what your business will be. Okay. Step two, your market assessment. You need to go out and figure out what the marketplace that you're doing business within is all about. You know, who's your target audience? We've talked about that earlier. Female, um, age range, is it young? Uh, is it 25 to maybe 54? Is it older because you're a plastic surgeon and you cater to an older market, um, 45 plus? You know, the geog geographic market. Easy to say 20 minute drive time, and that's somewhat typical, right? But in certain geographies, you have to really plan it out because rivers will divide the market. I, I think of the Boston, greater Boston area, right? So you have the Charles River dividing downtown Boston and Cambridge, which is a separate town, but Cambridge is only a mile away. But no one, absolutely no one, crosses the Charles River from Cambridge to come into downtown Boston. Give you an example. I had a location in Cambridge and in Boston, and they did not um, cannibalize each other at all. So you have to think about your geography. Think about bridges, highways, um, rivers that divide it. Otherwise, if you're fairly flat and everything is fairly normal in a suburban market, 20 minute drive time works. Do competitive analysis. Identify who you will compete directly against. So if you're a plastic surgeon and you're looking to open up a med spa, don't just look at other med spas. Look at other plastic surgeons that have med spas. If you're a dermatologist who wants to open a med spa, same thing. You want to look at what the other derms that have med spas, or, or quite a few, they may not call themselves that, but have a strong cosmetic component. If you're a med spa, don't look at the plastics and the derms. Take a look at the competition as the other med spas in town. So you want to look at the direct competitors. And the reason why you want to keep it to a finite number is you want to either yourself or somebody visit all of the competitors. What are they, uh, what are they charging for the services? Do they have an easy, accessible location? Do they have a, a, a location that uh, is just acceptable as far as the fit and finish? Or is it high end and really competitive and nice? So those are, those are, those are the things you're looking for. Um, and your sales forecast. So this is a little bit harder for an individual to do, but it's still possible. Really what you need to focus on is utilization analysis. So you, you have to have a, some idea about how many treatment rooms and what types of treatment rooms in order to do utilization analysis. So if you have one, um, let's say, injectable room, and you know that you can book that out 50% of the time. And you know when it's booked out, you can get $2,000 per hour. So you do the math, you're gonna be open five days a week, six days a week. Just do the calculation and determine what you believe your sales forecast would be. Um, you could do a little practice med spa comp comparable analysis. And basically what you wanna do is just ask uh, friends, colleagues, that are non-competitive, obviously, what they do. You know, what did you do in your first year? Go to the conferences, that's a great place to meet people. And you say, what did you do in your first year when you opened up your med spa? What are you doing now? You've been open six years. How well are you doing now? Now, keep in mind, people tend to exaggerate most of the time, so I tend to usually temper those numbers. But it, it's, uh, it's helpful to see what others have done so you can plan accordingly. Um, then your architectural program. You need to identify how many square feet that you want the facility to have. People think, oh, build it big and you'll make a lot of money. Well, you, building it big doesn't mean people will come. more people will come to you. There's only a certain market size wherever you're planning to put an aesthetic medical practice or a med spa, right? So you have to determine how big do I need to build it. We have... Um, I've come across many locations that are just four treatment rooms that do $2 million a year. 
I, I know of a plastic surgery practice that does uh, $2 million a year, uh, and they have three treatment rooms, basically. So you don't have to build it big to do well, but you want to make sure you accommodate uh, accordingly. So if you're going to have more than one um, clinical esthetician or clinical skincare room, and you want to focus in that area quite a bit, you'll need you'll need two or three rooms possibly. So you'll need to build it larger because a, a clinical skincare room will only produce a, a certain amount, right? Versus if you wanted a room for cool sculpting, that room alone can produce a much higher level than a clinical skincare room. So think about those things and maximize your return on investment when it comes to the square footage. Step three, your financial model. Now, there's four buckets of investment. You have your leasehold improvements, your furniture and equipment, your startup costs, and your startup costs are more of your uh, soft costs, you know, inventory, linens, medical supplies, the pre-opening payroll costs, your um, professional fees, if you're hiring consultants or your accountant, your attorney to review your lease, um, and things of that nature, those are all in your startup costs. Your, your next cost is your working capital. And usually you determine working capital after you forecasted your profit and loss statement, balance sheet, and statement of cash flows. So you determine how much money do you need put aside waiting to cover the cost of doing business until you've gotten to the point of break even. We see this number being all over the place. I see it at 40,000 sometimes, and that's a good number. Uh, I see it as high as $120,000 that you need available for larger operations, more competitive marketplaces, and, and that's a fine number, as long as you know how much it is you need. Don't guess, don't figure it, you'll borrow the money if you need the money, maybe I won't need it, just plan on it. In the United States, startups, um, the, the statistic with the SBA is, one of two startups close within a certain number of years, I think it's two years. And the number one reason, and practically the only reason, is a lack of working capital. Any business can be successful if they have enough time to become successful, but you need money to buy that time, okay? Securing financing and location. Uh, I was mentioning this earlier. It's sort of you need your bank loan first because you don't want to sign a lease and commit to a five-year or 10-year lease without knowing you have your money, but the bank won't give you your money without knowing you have a signed lease. So what you want to do is you want to get all the bank loan contingencies off the table and that thus you're ready to sign on the, on the dotted line with the bank and then you go and you sign your lease present that as the final contingency with the bank, and then close on your bank financing. Um, highly re I recommend you know, trying to keep it small, like three banks to talk to. You may need more to get, be able to get like three quotes, because you'd like to get three quotes. And you're looking for how much uh, they're gonna charge, um, what the contingencies will be. You know, sometimes keep in mind things like life insurance comes up as a contingency you'll need an equal amount of life insurance to the amount of the loan, at least the starter loan. So, uh, you know, that, that's, those are the types of contingencies that you may look at and say, I like this bank because even though it's a little bit more, I don't have all these reasons why, you know, they want to lock me in. Um, so look at all the options. And uh, in order to get that money, you need to secure it with a business plan typically. I have up here a sample of um, a, what's in a business plan. I highly recommend if you're doing it yourself, there's some great software and it's probably online right now that you can just secure to create your business plan. Uh, so that's, that's the best way to go with a do-it-yourself approach to this. And then you also need to complete your personal financial statements you need to complete your bank applications and then receive the offers, as I was mentioning, and review the contingencies. In securing your location, you want to identify a commercial broker. I start with friends, family, business associates, and say, you know, ask them, have you used uh, a broker before in this area? Do you know someone you trust, you like? Uh, see if they have a 
CCIM designation, which is a commercial broker designation that means that they've gone through a certification process. They don't have to have that, but it, it's helpful sometimes. You want to have um, you you want to be able to provide them your basic uh, site structure guidance, like nine foot plates, um, a desired location. Over to the right on the screen, it says um, you know location uh, considerations. So proximity to your market, accessibility. You should be no more than a quarter mile from a major thoroughfare. Visibility. That's icing on the cake. That visibility, right? So if you um, have visibility from the road, it sometimes actually can help reduce your marketing spend because it's advertising unto itself, right? Seeing your building, seeing your signage as people drive by. And then make sure you keep an eye on the adjacencies. You know, you may not want a dollar store next to your location, but you may want a Starbucks. You may want a Whole Foods other sort of similarly priced types of operations to what a med spa or an aesthetic medical practice would be offering. And adjacencies are very important. Um, uh, I would also, um, what's important is when you talk to your broker, one more thing about that, you want to tell them, uh, here's my criteria, please only show me locations that meet all of this criteria. We have worked with brokers in the past that all of a sudden we'll have 40 locations in our inbox and we get that down to 10 that really meet the criteria. So they'll just do these online searches into the system that get, they get into the um, multiple listing system for uh, commercial. And they'll just throw you all that match the initial criteria. You want them to do a little bit of work before sending you um, the, the listings, because otherwise you're taking a lot of time to walk through those listings. All right, then once you've identified a location, you need to submit a letter of intent, rent rate, length of lease, coterminous with your loan, negotiations on tenant improvements. Um, you know, you sometimes can get more tenant improvements if you go for a 10 year lease versus a five year lease. Some, I shouldn't say sometimes, you'll always get more on a, a longer term uh, lease. Uh, and then once you've received the draft lease, after you've agreed on a letter of intent, you want to make sure your real estate attorney reviews and provides comments. All right, plan implementation for opening. Step one, design, build, and equip your med spa. Architectural and interior design. You want first to have the architect or the designer, the interior designer, come up with a conceptual layout. You want to make sure people walk into a, a, an area that is uh, has a sense of arrival. Like you feel like you're somewhere important when you walk in your front door. Obviously, your front desk, your front office, your retail area, and we recommend not to have waiting up front. Right? It's just uh, better to have it somewhere in the back where you have uh, private waiting uh, for the procedure services or a consult. Um, think about color scheme. Think about your interior specifications. And hopefully, you're working with somebody that has done a medical spa before. That's very important when looking for an architect and or an interior designer. Identify somebody who has the experience doing cosmetic medical practices, or med spas, okay, or spas, that helps too. Uh, make sure the furniture and fabric specifications are commercial grade, not retail, not, excuse me, residential. You want things to last, right? So it's important that you use commercial grade types of fabrics, floor finishes, wall finishes. And yeah, don't forget the exciting, the fun part, which is the art and accessories to make it your own make it really feel like your medical spa. You also need to equip your location. Now, a lot of people start here, actually with, the, with that first word under services, lasers. Lasers are not the first thing you do when you buy, when you open and launch a medical spa. Lasers come later. 
right? Just because you went to a trade show and you walked the aisles of the trade show floor and you saw these gleaming, fun, exciting lasers, that's not the time to be buying it. The time to be buying it is once you know exactly what services and procedures that you're offering and you match up that with the proper devices that you need to allow your, your facility to offer those services and procedures, right? So equip your med spa with lasers, treatment tables, everything you need within the room. Make sure you, could, you have good merchandising, whether it be the shelving setup, the cabinetry, the millwork, uh, flat screen TVs uh, are fun and, and you can communicate a message. Uh, a lot of the vendors offer really high quality videos that you could build into a loop that could be playing in the waiting area or in the, um, the public area when you first walk in. It's visually exciting. Or even possibly sometimes it works if you have foot traffic to put it in the window to help show people what's, what's happening inside, right? And of course, you know, there's the not so exciting equipment to buy like your printers and your copiers and your computers and it's very necessary though. Pick the right software as well. Make sure that your software can accommodate the type of business that you are launching. So if you're involved in third-party billing, make sure there's a good EMR system in it and uh, it, it connects with third-party billers. But if you're not, there's a lot of great systems that are out there just for cash-based practices that, have a, that are very robust. Step two, operations implementation. First off, you need to create a service menu. Excuse me. When you're creating a service menu, uh, it's, it's not, I'm not talking about the, the menu, the marketing piece that you need to create, and you definitely do, but uh, that comes later. You want to create what exact services that you're going to offer with what types of products, whether it be fillers or other types of injectables, uh, what types of um, devices and services for skin rejuvenation that you want. You know, you've identified these program areas in your envisioning of your business, but now it's time to hone in on exactly, specifically, not just the service, but how it's supported with technology or other um, medical devices and or products, right? Um, and this is where I, that next line says products and equipment specifications. That really goes and dovetails right with creating that service menu. Don't let products and equipment specs, no, selecting products and equipment drive your service menu. You drive the service menu. Then you match it up with the products you need and the equipment you need. Define your retail program. We always say uh, make sure that you select a product line, a skin a skincare line that's clinical. You want a, a clinical skincare line that aligns, a skincare line, that aligns with your concept as much as possible. So, you know, if you are really focused on the science and, and the clinical side, you're gonna select a different line necessarily than if you have that more med spa fun and flirty approach. Um, they're still clinical lines, but they tend to be maybe a little bit um, more uh, accepting to the everyday person. Um, you need management systems. This is very important. You want standard operating procedures. You need and must have, even to be in compliance with medical regulatory service protocols, right? Um, sales tools that you need and want, a CRM system, uh, your point of sale software that we mentioned earlier. Step three, developing your marketing program. You know, you wanna build your brand. Finalize what your unique selling position is and what your points of differentiators are, and then come up with a name and have a logo designed. Design that brochure, talking about that a little bit earlier, the printed materials, and, and your, of course, your website, which is the, the foundation to your digital footprint. Um, you need to create an advertising and promotion program, have it done in advance. On the promotion side of things, um, you want to have a bi-monthly marketing program. So your grand opening strategy, that really should be your first two months of being open uh, and how you're going to launch and communicate your message into the marketing place, into the marketplace. 
you want to make sure you have that the opening week promotions and not just the opening week it's really the opening first two months um, and of course your detailed marketing budget because you need to know how much you're going to spend to communicate the message to generate the leads that you need to convert the leads to consultations and the consultations into clients. Step four, your staffing, all right? Just three parts to this. One, you need to recruit the team. Um, there's actually an Aesthetic Business Institute video course available on how to successfully hire new staff members. So if you became a member of the Aesthetic Business Institute, and I'll tell you a little bit about that at the end here, you can watch this video to learn how to hire new staff members. Uh, then hire the team once you've recruited the team. And of course, the ever important training process. You don't hire somebody and say, start your job, just do it. You have to take them through the employee handbook, your rules and your policies. You have to teach them customer service the way you want it done, the way your culture dictates it. You have to teach them all the products and they have to be trained on all the services they're going to perform. Oftentimes that's supported by your vendors, right? You bring in laser companies, your micro needling company, um, your product company, they'll do that training for you. The clinical training, of course, um, how do you log out Botox from your locked refrigerator? Something as simple as that. Management training for your supervisory staff, whether it be a manager and a sales consultant on the team, what do they do to help manage the facility day to day from procurement of products and ser uh, uh, products to um, the hiring process, the review process, you know, how to motivate the team. And then ever so important, do not forget this, everybody has to go through sales training. This is a sales process, it's a consultative sales type process when somebody buys the things that we offer at aesthetic medical practices and med spas because these are these are fairly pricey. No one goes out and over the counter buys a $5,000 cool sculpting procedure. You go through a consultation process. You learn about how it can be beneficial to you and if, whether or not you'll be a, a prime candidate. And you have to go through that process. Um, maybe you have to use care credit to order to secure financing to pay for it. All those things have to happen in the sales process. Thus, that sales training is ever so important. And then step five, opening setup. You now, making sure your retail space is properly set up and merchandised. Your treatment rooms are efficiently set up so that it's easy to produce or, or provide the services that are being performed in each room. Then you want a friends and family opening. Have your friends and family come have procedures and services. Uh, and provide either very significant discounts or sometimes we have worked with locations that just do this complimentary in order to get flow through the front door that first week as part of the training process. Once you've done that, you have your so soft opening. We don't recommend like the, a big grand opening until you've been open probably yeah, minimum four weeks. Get the kinks out, right? oftentimes up to eight weeks. And it, depending on the time of year, certain times of year are better for grand opening parties. Like right now, I would rate, wait to, right now until September, end of September actually, to do grand opening parties if you're, if you're launching in, in July, beginning of August. Um, so there's, there's a certain times of year that are, are better and summer is slow, better to take advantage of the time of year that's gonna start getting busier. Okay. So, Developing your medical spa, the DIY approach, um, is available on, the, or, uh, on ABI, which is the Aesthetic Business Institute, uh, part of that membership. When you join the Aesthetic Business Institute, you have access to a three-part video course series on developing your med spa, 10 detailed instructional documents on how to develop your med spa, uh, opening setup checklist that was on the previous slide, on how to open and set up your medical spa. All these things are available through uh, or by becoming what we call a fellow with the Aesthetic Business Institute. So um, 
the fellows are able to access turnkey solutions for every aspect of your business's success. So no matter what it is, if it's launching and opening, if it's marketing, if it's op daily operations, all of this is available uh, on the Aesthetic Business Institute um, website, accessible once you become a fellow, once you become a member of the organization. In addition, there are video courses and practice management certifications. So if somebody wants to either become a practice manager or a current practice manager wants to upgrade how they run the business that they are currently operating as a manager, you can go through a full certification program as a certified practice manager, an aesthetic manager. The other thing that we have on uh, the website of the Aesthetic Business Institute, once you become a member, are the financial calculators. So we have staff utilization, for an example. Like, How do you know when you should add staff? Well, this calculator helps take you through um, staff utilization and the different levels of staffing. So if somebody's utilized 80% of the time, yes, it's probably time to add another person. So if you have an esthetician that's utilized 80% of the time, it's time to add at least a half-time esthetician, if not another full-time esthetician. This calculator helps you figure that out. Um, device profitability and break-even calculator, which is great if you're looking to acquire a device or if you've already acquired a device and you're looking to figure out how much money can I make off of operating this device and adding it to my practice, this calculator takes you through all different scenarios that you plug in. Um, so, and these are just a few, there's, there's many more. There's also business toolkits as part of the Aesthetic Business Institute. Um, you can do a, go through this toolkit that helps you build your organizational chart and it has key staff responsibility matrix, um, which shows all the job functions by uh, roles and responsibilities. Uh, learn the equations behind key business terms, right? And you can then also learn how to calculate them for your practice. Uh, audit your website. It's a self-audit process. Implement staff hiring kits. Yeah, there are all different staff hiring kits for the different positions within a med spa. It's all very exciting. It's, it's all very dynamic, too, very interactive. So if you have attended this webinar, we have a special offer. Uh, there's a $500 off our annual ABI fellowship, and all you have to do is go to aestheticbusinessinstitute.com and use the promo code MEDAESTHETIC500 to register for that. And the offer is only available for the first 25 people that register. And there's quite a few people on this webinar, so if you are interested in taking advantage of this special offer, I would highly recommend to do it quickly. So that concludes today's webinar, and now I'd be more than happy to take any questions from the audience. Thank you so much, Francis. And um, wanted to let people know that if we're not able to get to your questions, that we will follow up with you, or Fran will follow up with you after the webinar. And again, if you have questions now, you can type them into the box. Um, one question was, how do you get information on local demographics to make sure you're in an area that has the right uh, demographics to support a medical spa? Um, a few different ways. There are services online um, that you can access. Uh, you can check with your Chamber of Commerce. Uh, that is probably the easiest way. They typically have quite a bit of demographic information. Uh, and you're usually looking for a target audience of over 10,000 individuals. So that would be 10,000 people that are between the ages of 25 and 54, living in household incomes of 75,000 or greater, that type of thing. Um, it's better, you know, the more um, a, a target audience you have, the better, especially as it relates to competition. Don't be confused. You can have 100,000 people in the target audience, but you may have 20 competitors. So that's not a big audience. That's not a big opportunity out there. So you could still have take advantage of the opportunity, but it's not, it's not going to be big. I'd be careful on how big you build it. You could have 10,000 people and only one competitor. Well, that's exciting. There's 
potentially 5,000 people that you could be going after, half of the audience at least. So you need to put those, weigh those two things against each other. Mm -hmm. And there's another question. Um, you talked about you know, having enough working capital. How long does it typically take a business like this to break even? So on the short end, three to four months. More typical, five to six, and sometimes up to a year. And you have to be ready for that. Great. And actually, someone wrote in just to recommend that the SBA, the Small Business Administration, can also be a good resource for demographics in addition to looking at your local um, yes. chamber of commerce. That's very true. And, um, and I just want to say that yeah, if they can sort of go back to review this information, so um, obviously the information is on the website you mentioned that's on the screen, and also this webinar will be up at metastheticsmag.com slash webinar uh, within a day if anyone wants to review that. And those are the questions we have, and if anything comes in later, we will certainly follow up with you. And thank you again so much, Fran. Oh, wait, someone just sent oh, a quick you. note, so I'm going to look at Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, and you know, we have a quick question that just came in. Huh, of course. Um, somebody was asking, as a licensed esthetician, what kind of training is required or available to open a medical spa? Okay, so... Um, if somebody is looking to and get this is in trained, California, I just speak now. Okay. So uh, in California, if you want to own a medical spa and you are not a medical uh, physician, right, if you're not a physician, a medical doctor, uh, you have to create this dual entity um, where you have a mm -hmm. LLC or, or a, a, a C Corp that manages owns and manages the business aspect to it, but you need a, a doctor that owns the medical practice. And essentially, um, it, it, most of the profit flows into the business side, and then the, doc the doctor makes his fair share based on whether he's performing services or not, but the others that are would, would make, of course, their compensation. And the, um, the, the location makes management fees and, and uh, facility fees and marketing fees are, are charged back, and they own the actual facility itself. Uh, and to learn about how to do that, well, you may not want to take the DIY approach. You may want to hire a consultant. You know, our sister company, Acara Partners, um, works with people all the time in opening up locations. There's no real training to figure out how to open or launch a medical spa. The aesthetic medical, excuse me, the aesthetic business institute is extremely helpful, and that would probably be a starting point because you're looking at a much lower price point. Be, join that, see what help you get, and then maybe take it to the next level and hire a consultant. Great, and yeah, that's really important too, just because uh, particularly if you, if you're not a physician, you also really want to have the uh, professional input of, of an attorney or a consultant that understands your state regulations. Yes. And so, again, thank you so much, Fran, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And we appreciate your being here and look forward to talking with you again soon. Well, thank you, Inga, and have a great day, everyone. Goodbye.